uh, growing up, we heard this story many times, and it reinforced the idea. We were fascinated because to us, it was proof that there was a purgatory, and it was proof that there is a supernatural life. Our lives revolved around two worlds growing up, one in the country of San Luis and the other in the city of Pueblo. We frequently returned to the valley because we had property over there and also because we had a lot of family there. When the CFNI, or FRAS as it's now known, went on strike for 18 months, we moved back to the valley and all of us girls went to school there. Josie remained longer in the, living with the Quintana side of the family, our grandparents. Josie married three times and had three children, Aaron, Patrick, and Sue, sitting right up front here. After her last divorce, Josie uh, declared she'd had enough and was determined to move on until she met the love of her life. Renaldo Perez, who was a considerate, fun, and kind man who brought the smile back to our sister and the joy that we all witnessed. From that point on, we used to kid her about being the cougar in the family. There was no doubt that her beauty, her love of music and dances and friendly gregarious nature always attracted other people. Growing up with Josie was never boring. She loved to laugh. And she also loved animals, especially wolves and cats. It wasn't uncommon for her to have three cats at one time. Not only did she pamper them, she could train them really well. One cat she had didn't use a litter box. She trained it to use the toilet. Another kitty ate wolves with its paws. And they all loved to sleep with her in her bed. Joanne and I uh, used to express concerns about her allergies and possibly rehoming these kitties, but she didn't hear of it. She loved her kitties dearly. Josie was also a big fan of Mexican music, and I used to love to hear her sing. Too bad she didn't have the means to record it back then. But she'd go to concerts of her favorite artists at any opportunity. Wherever she went, she was easygoing, fun-loving, and was generous. Anytime you visit her, you'd come home with food or clothes. And my daughter and I, Gina, we were talking about we're going to have to start buying our own clothes again because she always used to give us some clothes, and they were nice. But I even got closer with my sister when she started working for me at the Awareness Institute. Her love for people and her trustworthiness in managing our office was impeccable. We worked together for many years until she retired, and I missed her very much after she left. Ever since our parents passed away, all three of us sisters clung together Josie filled the gap of our mother. She knew more family history, more relatives, more remedios, and stories that Joanne and I could put together. We always would get together for our birthdays to celebrate and we tried to work out our major holidays with our families. On Sundays, I would pick my sister up and we'd come to mass together here. But as time moved faster, uh, her health declined, and she was unable to come. After Thanksgiving, she came down with COVID, and we hoped she, she'd been deaf again with her herbal family and her remedios, but it wasn't meant to be. She passed away peacefully after fighting this one on, on December the 28th of this year just seconds after her oxygen mask was removed. It was one day prior to our mother's passing, and we like to think 
and her mom was waiting for her to walk into her bedroom. We also like to think and laugh that she had enough of 2020, like so many of us. We can only be grateful for having the wonderful blessing of our beloved sister. She touched our lives like no other. We are also grateful to Father Greg for anointing her with her last rites prior to her passing. And we're also thankful to Parkland Hospital's compassion in allowing families to be with their loved ones when they are close to death. And that doesn't happen everywhere. Our sister Josie wasn't perfect by any means, but she loved and loved well. And as I see it, that's what we're called to do every day. We love you, sis. We miss you. I guess I reiterate exactly what my sister said that it's pretty difficult to stand up here after all the years that we shared with her and, and just give you a few vignettes of her life. So therefore, so I won't rant on and on, I decided to just write down some of my thoughts real quick and tell her we can walk through. My sister's life was like a roller coaster ride. There were many ups and downs, peaks and valleys, hard times and struggles. But through it all, she being a strong will and resourceful overcame life's challenges. For us seniors, or what I refer to as seniors, being chronologically gifted, you, remember, you might remember a song by Frank Sinatra, I Did It My Way. Well, I would teach my sister that when her time on earth ended, that song would depict her life. And of course, she would smile. Yes, my sister enjoyed life, and she continued to challenge it. But now that she has reached her destination, she is probably smiling and saying, Man, what a wild, crazy ride that was. My sister endured much, but her defenses were weakened by the unpredictable, overpowering force that is, has invaded the world and has taken many lives. It is an organism that is known by different terms, such as SARS-CoV-2 and COVID-19, both being the cause of a coronavirus disease. This virus is described as a part of a body resembling a crown. In Spanish and other languages, Crown is interpreted as corona. Although this legal organism takes on the form of a crown, we, as Christian believers, know that our one true God wears that royal crown, sits on the throne, and has power and authority over all. This so-called virus may have been named for its legal makeup, but no power is greater than Christ. He already won the victory over death, and I pray God will annihilate this contagious entity. With that reliance, since this pandemic, I have referenced Bible verses that have changed my mind and spirit, and I want to share them. One of them is Psalm 15, 70, verse 1. Be merciful to me, O God, for my soul trusts in you, and in the shadow of your wings I will make my refuge until these calamities have passed me by. The other one is a shorter version. It's not the complete version of Psalm 91. This is from 1 to 4. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. 
Surely he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence, which is the disease that you are going around now. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. That is our first chapter. In the final moments of my sister's life, she, she struggled with breathing. Since God gives us breath, the breath of life, we thanked him for the life he gave her. And with her last dying breath, we committed her spirit, her life, back into God's hands. COVID may have claimed my sister's life, but God claimed her soul. My sister, being of strong faith, met her final challenge and relented in letting go. She may be physically absent, but I believe she is spiritually present in Christ. Having been of similar DNA with Josie, she takes a part of us with her. But she also at least a big part of her life in us. And if we take our arms and we wrap them around ourselves like this, or with each other, we embrace the love and peace she leaves with us in Christ. Thank you, God, for the time you allow us in sharing this time with our sister, mother, friend, and miscellaneous relationship. And we await that grand reunion when we meet again. Good afternoon. Just uh, to the family, condolences of uh, St. Francis Parish, Father Salvador Moore, to the staff of St. Francis, uh, our deepest sympathy to the loss of the family. If you have any questions, anything we can do for you at any time, feel, please, please feel free to uh, give us a call. Uh, we're, we're always here. A little quick reminder for those going to communion. You remove one glove to receive communion, and you put your glove back on towards the portion of that If you come in, if you cannot receive communion, you would like a blessing, just come on up to the Father, cross your arms like this, and the Father will give you a blessing. St. Francis Xavier Parish as we celebrate the Mass for the Christian Barrel Maria Montoya. Our song book today is Father Salvador Kumar. Our musicians are Connie and Peggy. Please stand and face the entrance of the church as we begin our service. Please stand.
the Lord will be with you. The reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. At the time, Jesus said to the play, I give you praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. For although you are given these things from the wise and from God, you have revealed them to your children. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my tongue, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal me. Come to me, all you who love and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourself. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This is it. My brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ, we all believe and we know, though we die on earth physically, but we never die spiritually. Though Jesus died on the cross for the sake of our sin, but He gave life in eternal always in our life. Through his resurrection. That's why we all believe. That's why we quoted the reading that we read in the second reading. I don't know how many of you really go to a church and have true faith in God. As I was listening the eulogy today, we heard a lot the faith that she had and made her sisters and family to do the same thing in Christ. Always, whenever people come for eulogy, they speak about the person. We try to canonize the person as C or P is so saintly. But we are not here to canonize anyone because we have no right to canonize, we cannot say they were pure and innocent. Everyone commits here on any time sin. It includes everyone. When the Pope preached everyone in the world. It is only the God who can give us the great mercy of forgiveness to make as pure as pure of a soul, to be with him in eternal life. We are gathered here to worship God. That is the most important thing that we need to know. We always come to church not to do anything that greater than from a human being, but to worship God and to give thanks to the Lord. We are gathered here to show our faith in God and to worship God in our life and to give thanks to the Lord for all the marvelous blessing that He did in our sister's life. That's what we are called to be in our life. We need to give thanks. We give thanks to everyone Whomever we meet on earth and to someone who does something for us, we give thanks. But we have this beautiful life. The God who gave this beautiful life to live on earth. He's the one who gave permission to walk on earth. He's the one who gave you the knowledge, family, love that we share with each other. It is all God's will. For Him 
we need to give thanks always and every moment of our life. You may think, why God following talking about the times on the day of funerals? We do not know what will happen to him. We need to be thankful to God when we are alive and when we are able to give thanks in the day of our life. See, you might have experienced a lot of good things and you see, might have been filled with the blessing of God throughout our life. For that reason, we need to give thanks to God. And we need to worship and give thanks always in every moment of our life. That's what St. Paul says. In every moment, every circumstances, you need to give thanks, even in the happiness, even in the sadness, even in the painful moment. Give thanks to the Lord. We have seen this pandemic, how bad it was for the people in the family and the ones. We lost our sister because of COVID, but she is in a good hand. God put him and God made her to relieve her pain from this world and suffering, taking her to the life of happiness. For that reason, we need to give thanks and for protecting us from this pandemic. We need to give thanks to the Lord all the moments of our life. The other thing we need to reflect is to renew our faith. In every death reveals us. Today they are. Tomorrow we are going to be. We can never say that and I am going to live for life long. Eternal. No one can say except God. Today she is. Tomorrow we are. Only God can do anything for us. Not anyone in the world in the human being. Not the money. The wealth, the steady, the position, power that we have. Nothing can be done in those moments. Only God can take care. Trust in God. Renew your faith in God. Who can save you? He is the only one who can save you. How that faith? Renew your faith and keep always God as a first in your life. That will help you. Keep this life active and alive, running towards the heaven, running towards the eternal life of God and you. The last, we need to pray always in our life. Without prayer, we can never carry God's faith and God's trust in the human form. And once the people who lost the human form, which means those who are dying, can never pray for themselves. We all the people needed to plead God for the mercy to be showered upon our sister. Not only today, the days to come. We are called, that's the reason the Catholic Church requests to the Catholic people to pray for the souls of purgatory. And pray and offer Eucharist, which is the most great sacrifice ever a human being can give to your soul. That's why we are gathered here to offer the greatest gift of Eucharist to our beloved sister's soul in order to receive the mercy of God. That's what we need to do today, brothers and sisters. Pray for our departed ones. Especially to our sister Maria Jones. That we give her the mercy of God to enjoy the eternal life in heaven. You may have received from the lot of gifts, you may have received them from everything but of the year, but you may have forgotten to give them a gift or something which seems wonderful in life. Now it's the right time we can give her the gift of God's mercy through offering her the Eucharistic sandwich, the Mass. Praying for her, praying the Rosary, saying the Divine Chapel, which will make God's mercy flow on your mother, your sister.
stood for your friend and your enemy. That's why we are gathered here. Not to categorize anyone. We do not know what we are. But if God knows who we are, what we are. Let us pray to God. Let us keep trusting God. Worship Him. Give thanks to the Lord all the week, which will keep you in track of eternal life. Amen. Let's all stand and put forth our faith in Jesus. Brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he lives in for the church. Confident that God heals the rights of those who trust in the Lord Jesus, we join our prayer to his hands. The baptism. Amen. Amen. Receive the light of Christ. Scatter the darkness now and lead her over the waters of death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Our sister Maria was nourished to the table of the Savior. Welcome into the halls of the heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Many friends and members of our families have gone before us and await the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home with your son. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Family and friends of Maria, seek comfort and consolation. Heal their pain and dispel the darkness and doubt that come from grief. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Those who trusted in the Lord, now sleep in the Lord, give refreshment, rest, and peace to all whose faith is known to you alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our sister Maria. Strengthen our hope so that we may live in the expectation of your son's coming. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Many people die by violence, war, famine, and spirit. Show your mercy to those who suffer so unjustly these sins against your love and gather them to the eternal kingdom of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Love God, give us peace and heal our souls. Hear the praise of the Redeemer Jesus Christ and the wise of the people whose lives were purchased with the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all the saints in Christ and grant them your grace in the future. Your spirit to Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for life. Oh, 
resurrection we are to you, Lord. The bread of life and the chance of salvation. Giving thanks that the others will be to be in your presence and minister to you. How do we pray that partaking of the body and bread of Christ to gather into one by the Holy Spirit? Remember, Lord, it was prayer for the world and beautifulness of charity to and from the so called Stephen Jameson of Bishop and all the clergy and lay faithful. Remember your servant Maria, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant them to see. She was united with your son in a death like this. May also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also, brothers and sisters of Father God's name, the hope of the resurrection. Now the time we all see, welcome them into light of your face. How blessed must all we pray that with the resurrection may be part of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who are pleasing to our days, we will be to be present and praise and glory for you to your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory upon you for a glorious Lord Jesus Christ, who said in all those who did say you, my priest and you too, look not our sins for the faith of the church, and graces and granted peace be to in accordance with your will, holy and great forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all days. Let us all pray to the sign of our days.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who take away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called the Supper of the Lamb. Lord,
Fasting in God, we have prayed together for our brothers and sisters in Him. Now we come to the last prayer of the very sadness in parting, that we take comfort in hope that one day we shall see again and enjoy, enjoy with our friendship. Although this congregation will disappear in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again to enjoy our kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. Saints of God, come to your aid. Listen to meet the angels of the Lord. Receive your soul and be sent to the Most High. May Christ who call you, take you to himself, and angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive your soul and be sent to the Most High. Let your numbers grant unto the Lord, and let the light shine upon him. Receive your soul, and present it to God at this time. To you, O Lord, we command the soul of Maria, your servant, in the sight of this world, to see his love there. In your sight, may she live forever. Forgive whatever sins she committed to human weakness, and in your goodness, grant her everlasting peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In peace, let us take our sister to a place of rest. Thanks, Jesus. Thanks. 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 